warning. The Catholic Man Show contains high levels of manliness. If you think you may be too weak to withstand the manliness represented in the following program, please do yourself a favor and stop listening now. If you choose to continue in spite of this warning, if at any time you feel yourself overcome by the manliness, stop immediately and consult your closest medical professional. And now, for the not-so-fair, faint, or frilly, we present The Catholic Man Show. Welcome to the Catholic Man Show. We're on the Lord's team, the winning side, so raise your glass. Adam Minahan here, sitting with David Niles, praying that this episode goes well. We're doing some firsts. We enjoy firsts on the Catholic Man Show. Totally. Uh, We are doing a Facebook Live for the very first time of the show. So if you're listening, Facebook Live, shout out. Thanks for everybody. You're going to hear this episode early. On Facebook, so go over there to Facebook, um, like our Facebook page. We may be doing this on and off, um, not every episode, but that way you can get maybe listen to the Catholic Man Show a couple days early if you if you desire. Totally, we have a lot of irons in the fire right now. Yes, we're recording video on one piece of software, audio on another piece of software, while simultaneously streaming it to Facebook on the same video software. Just a lot of things happening. Yeah, this isn't considered a official partial indulgence by listening and watching to the Catholic Man Show. However, I definitely think that there is some atonement that that can be had by listening and watching. So it's not an official. That's what you're it's saying. It's not official, but but it doesn't have to be official. There's, you know, like right. there's it's definitely a penance. Right. Yeah, it's, yeah, because it has to be a penance. All kinds of penance achieves the same effect of an indulgence. So. Yeah. There you go. Okay. I'm glad we got that knocked out. Okay, so if this is your first time listening to the Catholic Man Show, we do three things every episode. We open, review, and enjoy a man beverage. That's the first thing we do. Today's going to be an interesting man beverage. It's a. It's also a first. Man, we are like uh, hitting some firsts left I and agree. right. I, I agree. The second thing we do, the second segment, we highlight a man gear of some sort. I'm excited about this uh, man gear that we decided on this evening. Yeah. And then we have a man topic tonight. The topic is silence. The book of silence, or the power of silence by uh, Cardinal Seurat. Correct. Is kind of what we're going off of. Excited about that as well. So, let's jump into the man drink. Beverage. Today. So today, our uh, drink is moonshine. Not any kind of moonshine. It is uh, Smith Creek moonshine. It's a flavor of, which, which, where am I? Oh, you you want the, you want the beverage cam? Oh, we have a beverage. Yeah, I forgot about the beverage Hit it up cam. with the beverage cam. Uh, Smith Creek Moonshine coffee flavor. I got this when my family went to Branson, Missouri, a couple weeks ago. We went over there, and uh, I was able to try some of this, and I, was, I really enjoyed it. And so I, I bought some in, in preparation to review on the show. And so, anyway, it is... It's it's actually kind of light to be honest with you. Let's let's get away from the, move, the, <laughs> the beverage cam. Uh, it, Turned into a kneecap cam. Yeah, uh, it's it's only twenty five percent alcohol, so it's not a strong. Yeah. Moonshine. When you think so of that's, moonshine, that's you think like of, a li- that's like a liqueur, really. Yeah, yeah, because it's basically fifty proof. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but anyway, let's try it, and then we have a special uh, thing we can add to it later. So okay. We're on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. Cheers to Jesus. Cheers. So we're drinking it on ice this evening. I, I've i had it a couple times and it's... You know what? It's lovely. It's a really good... That is just delicious. I actually think that this would be better than Bailey's in a coffee. You know what? It's almost a little too good. Well, it's, it is... It is... It, it's it's a little sweet, too, to be honest. It's very sweet. It's very caramely. You know, like... Uh, what kind of... Some coffee kind of has that caramel flavor naturally in it. Well, maybe it's flavored coffee. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know that when the caramel, like, coffee has that natural caramel flavor in it when you drink, like, caramel flavored coffee? Mm. 
That's what this is. That's what this is. Yeah. It's pretty good though. Uh, it, it's a nice sipping look liquor moonshine. Totally. It's not like again, it's not like what you think. So moonshine, the word moonshine, do you know where that that comes from? I do not. Back when the, in the prohibition days, they used to have to distill this at night to keep from getting caught. And so when the moon was shining is when they were able to distill. Thus, moonshine. Gotcha. Gotcha. So that's what they they used to do. Now, we actually have a, uh, another special man drink that we can introduce if you would like. Would you, do you want to do it? I do. Okay. Now this is what we call white lightning. This is the real deal. This is real moonshine. This is uh, distilled out of southeast or uh, yeah southeast Oklahoma. This is real moonshine. It is. There's no flavor to it. It is. It was not not purchased at a store. No, it was it was uh, distilled. Anyway, um, so this is basically like what they start out with with every whiskey. You know, they start out here, yeah, and then they put it all in barrels and different types of barrels and aging it in different ways to yeah. let it um, basically become whiskey. Yeah, so it starts off as this, and it gets a brown color from the barrel, and then in the end they water it down because right. it's still really strong still really right out strong. of the barrel. Yeah. So this, uh, to me. I mean, it is it is very strong. It's stringent. It is not something to be to mess around with. You can smell like the corn syrup, the corn, the corn, which yeah. I guess has been turned into a syrup. You know, they I mean, got to add sugar, sugar to, to, it. to the uh, distilling. I don't know what proof this is because it it was like I said, it was distilled. It's not an official thing, right? So I'm not adding much. That's plenty for me. Uh, it'll definitely it definitely uh, holds its its name but with this stuff right here you can definitely tell okay yep this is real moonshine have you ever had uh apple pie moonshine yes i have and there's all different kinds man there's like lemon drop moonshine yeah but like you can go to the store you can go to the liquor store and buy apple pie moonshine it's not really apple pie moonshine but every now and then you can get apple pie moonshine mm -hmm. that stuff is delicious yeah and dangerous it is because you can drink you can drink it fast, really well, fast. Well, you can drink yeah you can you can feel like that you're drinking it in moderation. You could be sipping on it, but because of, of the alcohol content, right? Yeah, it's not. There's no that physical effect. You're like it's not burning on the way down. It's not right. It's like uneasy in your stomach, which yeah. typically would happen if you drink something that strong so quickly. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, because we are doing Facebook Live, and we probably haven't said it in a couple episodes, Dave. L let's dissect why we are actually drinking on air yeah okay so we drink on air because god made the things of this earth good and we want to enjoy his creation and enjoy it for its goodness okay so you know the same that applies to a good drink mm -hmm. um and so we're not we're not prudes we're not fundamentalists here on the catholic as Man we, Show. we we uh concluded on an episode with father kelly what was that last week two weeks ago two weeks ago and so um, we enjoy a good drink because there's something about having a good drink, especially with your brother, your, with your friend, uh, that really facilitates a good conversation. Right. And, you know, there's another thing that you don't really know somebody until you've shared a meal with them. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's very similar. I think the same thing is going on. You don't know someone until you've had a drink with them. You, you could maybe interchange those two. You know, if, once you've had a drink with somebody, now it's almost like there's a bond between you. Do you think it's because you actually get to things that are important? Could be. Yeah. You know, that's kind of like that's a, good, table. that's a a good thought. Yeah. Because, you know, at the table, you, you, hey, not how's your family doing? You know, all the, the small talk. It's really about, hey, here's, as a family, this is what we should be doing yeah. this week. Oh, and nice you, weather today, huh? Right. It, you you kind of bypass all that and talk about yeah. serious things. Yeah. I think that, I don't know, could be it. Also, I think that there's something more even fundamental about it that, uh, especially sharing a meal, you are literally like continuing your lives you know there's there's something very foundational about eating they're like i'm gonna live another day yeah and i'm it's very important for me to eat and i'm doing it with you you know like something sure. that's so important and you've decided to sh to share that important thing with this person you know uh i don't think really we would think about that when we're sitting down especially here in america where Dinner is guaranteed, food, yeah, basically. Exactly. There are people here who don't, you know, have a guaranteed, you know, they don't have a full fridge, but um, for the most part, we're all doing pretty well. Right. So maybe that's why, you know, that's another who reason knows, why we knows. 
why we enjoy. I'm sure it, books have been written. Oh, I'm on sure. the topic. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, what 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 book are you going to be reading now that you you killed? Uh, uh, I Power have of silence. I have already started the Interior Castle. Ooh, I have. That's one I've not read yet. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Avila, Teresa of Avila. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And so far, it's already it. Uh, the Power of Silence. The full title is The Power of Silence Against the Dictatorship of Noise. So far, it has been a really good uh, parallel because uh, Cardinal Seurat talks about it in the book, like basically kind of keeping in t uh, a space of your interior for this silence, you know, a place for God to reside. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, from what I know about the interior castle, that's what it's about. It's about kind of the same thing, having this private place within you that you don't share with anybody, not even your spouse, you know, that this piece of me is for God alone. Mm -hmm. And it's his place. You know, it's his even more than it is mine. That's, I'm only on the first chapter. So, right. <laughs> don't so know for come, sure. But you have to come back to that's, us with uh, that. That's, that. That's the impression from what I've heard other people say about it. Nice. So, it's almost providential. That yeah. Yeah. What made you decide it? I don't know. Okay. The Holy Spirit. It must. It must you leave what lot, else could it be? You yeah. leave a lot of room in your life for the Holy Spirit to be active. Yes. So. Indeed. Indubitably, my friend. Well, uh, when we get back, we're going to jump into the man gear. We're here, Facebook Live, recording live. I don't know. Is that what you call it? I don't know. I'm old. I don't know the terminology. But when we get back, we're going to jump into the man gear. We're on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. All right, first segment knocked out. Jump over to the Facebook real quick. See if there's anybody still. Oh, watching. there, there are peeps. There are so many there's, peeps. There's fourteen. Somebody? There's fourteen people watching. Wow, that is way more than what I thought. Glad to see you guys. Oh, sweet. Andrew Whitney, what's up? There's a lot of guys over there. Hmm. Beverage cam. That's what. Yes, beverage cam. We totally should have gotten Cardinal Sarah on the show. Sarah, once again, nobody knows how to say his name. I wish. I wish somebody did. Can somebody answer this for us? So, okay, so now we'll, we'll, we'll jump to the man gear. Um, I'll let you spearhead the conversation. Okay. Y'all pray for him. Pray for Please him. do. Pray. Please pray. do. It's so hard to find a good co-host these days. Especially on a low budget. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. I'm David Niles. I'm here with Adam Minahan. We are drinking a combination of Smith Creek Moonshine Coffee. Coffee Moonshine. It's coffee flavored moonshine. Purchased at the liquor store. No, I, I, at the distillery in at, Branson. At a distillery. You could buy this at a liquor store. I'm sure. I'm yeah, sure so this is where we're drinking a liquor store product, which is a a liqueur, essentially, mixed with the authentic moonshine. White lightning. White lightning. And it's delicious. It's delicious. You know what? Didn't really change the flavor a whole lot. No, it did not. The, well, because the, the, that coffee flavor is pretty power, like, pretty powerful. So I agree. Okay, so let's jump into the man gear. Let's okay. do this. Okay, you want to do it? No, I said... You I'd want me to do it? Yeah, I said I'd let you do it. Okay, the man gear for today is this. They if, can't, if you can't, if you can't. if you can't watch, if you're not seeing, this is a chain that I have around my wrist. This chain is not just a chain. This chain represents my Marian consecration. Uh, I recently celebrated my three-year anniversary, my third anniversary of. Oh, was it mine? Yeah, mine was three. No, yours was four because mine was three. Yeah. So when I say recently, I mean about a year ago. Okay. I celebrated my <laughs> three-year anniversary. Uh, so I was privileged enough this year to celebrate my fourth. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, you know, just it's so important <laughs> that you keep track of these these dates. <laughs> anyway, okay. If you read 
a pheno- this is a phenomenal book. Uh, it's called True Devotion by St. Louis de Montfort. Bold guy. Let me just let me just throw this out there. The guy was a bold guy. Bold man. Not afraid to take a stance on something. You know he was he did not waffle. You know what I mean? He okay. did not waffle. No. So um he said things like for example, he who has not Mary for their mother has not God for their father. Bold. Yes. Okay. Accurate. I think so. There's just not a lot of guys out there today, I think, who would be willing to Lay that down. Yeah, plant themselves in into that territory. But anyway, um, he talks about one of the a really good thing you can do as a reminder of your consecration is to wear a chain of some kind. He and he's you know he says oh you know maybe around your wrist or around your ankle. Then he also uh, talks about some heavier duty stuff on your waist, right? Yeah, yeah. He talks about some guys who uh, not only did they wear a thick chain around their waist, they attached it. To, to a ball, weight. yeah, like it was. They were literally dragging <laughs> around a ball and chain the rest of their life, you know. <laughs> that wouldn't, yeah, I would never forget that. No, it was. It, let me tell you, it was effective. Yeah, I hope you didn't have to hunt either. It's like, I don't know. There's just a lot of things <laughs> that I think you. That would be. Re- Can you imagine trying to get through an airport today, <laughs> the ball and chain on, sir? I'm gonna have to ask you to take that off. I can't do that. Nope. Cannot do that. I can't. Cannot do that. Anyway, I wouldn't recommend the ball and chain personally. St. Louis de Montfort, like I said, he's a bold guy. Right. Okay, so he might he's rec- he might recommend it, even today. Who knows? But um, having a chain, I for me, really is a good reminder. I've been wearing it for four years now. Correct. Correct. And it, uh, it really was a good reminder for me. What I did was I just went to Lowe's and got some chain. You can buy some online, but, you know, you pay like 20 bucks for, mm. you know, eight inches of chain. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I didn't, one that, I didn't want one that was beautiful or pretty. Right. Um, because to me, when you consecrate yourself to Mary, you consecrate yourself as a slave to Mary, as a slave to Jesus through the loving, the loving care of Mary. So... You belong to her indirectly. You know, she's sort of like the uh, the next chain of command, so to speak. You right, know? right. Ultimately, you belong to Jesus, but you trust yourself into her hands because her will is so intimately united with Christ. Right. Um, so I wanted a chain that was going to be more slave-like. You know, what kind of chain would a slave actually wear? So I, mm-hmm. I tried to find something that was just very ordinary. Yes. And you didn't put a clasp on it. I mean, you and I no. both, we don't have a clasp on right. it. So, like, it just stays on your wrist. You cannot... Yeah, no. I mean, you could take it off if you had some pliers, but... Right. You'd have to pry one of the... Links off. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've I, noticed that it has reminded me of Mary... You want a beverage cam it? You can... Oh, yeah. I can do that. Show it off. So, um, I've noticed... I've played this game before. I don't know if it's actually a game, but I've tried to log... How often throughout the day do I actually intentionally and purposefully think of Mary? Uh huh. You know, like, okay, I was, as I was driving, you know, keeping myself in her presence. You know, how often do I do that really? intentionally? How many tally marks did you get? I only got like 16. 16? Yeah. That's incredible. But I think I, would, I think I would have like three. <laughs> well, but it was because I was intentionally like planning it. Like, you know, okay, it's like, right. It's like, I guess if that's the game you're playing. You know, because I was like, that's what I was, you know, I was trying to figure out how many times could I think of, of Mary today. Right. And so if you intentionally think about that. You could, you could do it a lot. You could yeah. do it a lot. You sure. Could, you could do it like five times in one hour. Easy. When I first put my chain on, I was getting a little, uh, maybe a little, a little crazy about it. No. You? Uh, yeah. I know. Because at first it was really tight. In fact, it was like hurting a lot. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> come on. <laughs> like almost like I wanted it to, you know, but since then it has since stretched out and is no longer tight. I mean, I can get two fingers under it now. Right. But um, I have, it's also been an opportunity for evangelization for me a couple of times. I've, Ooh, tell the story. Oh, 
This is a good story. You mean you mean about the about Brahms? You yes. mean tell me the tell yes. the Brahms story? Yeah. Okay, so my wife and I were eating in a Brahms. We we're on our way back home from the Wichita. We were, had been at the Wichita Family Conference, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we stopped in Blackwell, Oklahoma. You could probably get some moonshine in Blackwell. I'm sure you probably could. And we were eating at probably one of the nicest establishments in Blackwell, which is the local Brahms right off of I-35. And uh, Pamela, my wife, was nursing our three-month-old. Yeah. Let's see, she was born in April, May, June, July. Yeah, so th- a three-month-old. Um, and we were just eating at Brahms, and this lady walks up, this girl, she was about our age, she's like, uh, excuse me, um, are you guys Catholic? And we just went, yeah. And she goes, I thought so. I just, I look, I could, I just saw you, and I was like, I'll bet they're Catholic. And it was like, all right, yes. <laughs> I don't know how you did that. I think that probably says a lot more about you, Than strange me. lady, <laughs> yeah. that you could like maybe have like some gift of the Holy Spirit, like the vision right. or something. But I'm, gl- if there's a vibe that I want to put off. <laughs> <laughs> it's the I'm Catholic vibe, right. okay? So anyway, uh, she's and we I asked her. She's like, well, I mean, I just saw you, and she's nursing the baby. She had the cut. Co- she had a nursing cover. It's not right. like you know she was just some people. Right. Some people do that, you right. know. But anyway, uh, just nursing here and eating, and then I saw your I saw the chain around your wrist, and I was that I was like, I knew it. They're Catholic. That was the that was the last straw. So, but anyway, it's I've also had other people ask me, you know. What? Are, uh, tell me about that chain you're wearing. And so it's a great opportunity to say, well, it reminds me who I belong to. Right. And then, you know, it just... You yeah, can, it opens up the question. Right, exactly. That. And Well, it goes to, you know, we always... People say you're not... The, the real purpose of, in life is, is to serve others, right? You know, to serve God and serve others. Yeah. You, you only live whenever you die to yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of the same idea whenever you're consecrating... Um, your life to marry is that you're only truly living whenever you lay down your life for another and you know laying down your life for mary isn't a bad per- isn't a bad choice yeah because she's only going to bring you closer to jesus yeah mm-hmm. so that's kind of the purpose of it you know so it's an idea of dying to yourself um for the greater good mm-hmm. yeah because she's the queen because she is the queen in the old te- old testament fashion yes Yes, the yeah. Ark of the Covenant. She's the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, I mean, if you go look at uh, David, is married to Bathsheba. He died. Solomon took over. And then who was the queen during Solomon's reign? It was Bathsheba. It was the mother of the king. So um, to belong to her was to have the quickest route to the king. Anyway. Yeah. And, and, you know, the Bible says the prayer of the righteous is... It, uh, the prayers of the righteous are, ju- are availeth a- much. Availeth much. Yeah. yeah, thank you. It's always best to quote the Dewey Rames, I feel, if you're just... quoting the Bible. Availeth. When availeth. Else, when else do you get to use a word like that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, uh, can't recommend highly enough the book True Devotion by St. Louis de Montfort. Um, you will really love it. When, if you buy it, don't be too intimidated. It's not a big book, but half of it is the book and half is the consecration. Right. It's 30 days. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a thirty day consecration. Um, there's a couple of versions. I have the, an abridged version. Mm-hmm. Um, when's your day? When's your feast day? Uh, Saint Louis de Montfort's feast day. Nice. Mine's yeah. uh, Mount Carmel, mm-hmm. which is just that just it happened. Just happened. Yeah. yeah, that's why I knew for sure. I, mm-hmm. Mine was the third year. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that that's a it's a great practice to have if you're looking to up your spiritual game, and ha- have it blessed, and it's another sacramental. Ooh, yeah, great point. Yeah. Have you had yours blessed? No, I have not. Oh. That's something I needed to yeah, do. Yeah, you need to do that. I mean, it, I didn't think about it for a while when I had mine, but oh, se- after several months of wearing it, I... How long How long have you had your chain? I think only... Because I gave... I went to Lowe's and just bought all this chain. I've given you and like three other people chain. Yeah, I don't think I've had... I haven't had it for very long. Maybe... Maybe a year? Yeah, Maybe. Maybe. Over six months, probably. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, um, when we get back, we are going to jump into the topic of silence. The whole next to- next segment is going to be complete silence. So just it's enjoy, be awesome. enjoy it. Best, best segment yet. Yeah. Close your eyes. Come on, the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass.
Sweet. Literally, this next segment is going to be nothing but silence. And some people will say it's our best segment yet. To date. That is the best. Are you going to move this camera? That is the best you've ever done. I kind of forget. I left you yeah. solo there for a while. Yeah, that's all right. Let's jump over to Facebook just real just, fast. Let's see how our peeps are doing. Wow, we have way more people on there than I thought. It's 24 Scroll people. all the way down. All the way. all the way. Keep going. All the way down. I just like it when people say we look great. Wow. I knew it. We have the same. Somebody has the same feast day as us. Yeah, nothing more manly than serving a great woman. Totally agree, Adam Conk. I like Adam. Ad Adam is such a great guy. If uh, I'm currently serving two great women, my wife and Mary. Mm -hmm. You Mary and your wife. Yeah. Hmm. It doesn't make me like a polygamist or anything. No. Well, and also your daughters. I'm only married to one of them. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm glad we got that. Glad we got that settled. Okay. Um, the 33 we... days to glory. Yeah, that's a good, that's another good one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My wife did that one just this last year. I, I read True Devotion every year. That is the, one of the few books that I've said I, I'm going to read this every year. I haven't done that, but I... I read it's it one of the year. few books that I've said that. I read that one every year and The Ways to Mental Prayer every year. Those are two books that I read every year. I try to read two books every year. Dude, I'm killing it with books this year. Good. More than I ever have to date, probably, in a year's time frame. When do you find time to do that? We've been. I've been doing a lot every night. So just at night, like... About an hour every night. Oh, really? Okay, that's great. Yeah. And then, you so know, what does Haley uh, do when you're doing that? She reads as well. It's so just something on her own? Yeah. 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 We both read together. You read next to each other? Next to each other. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Typically outside. Not to be confused with reading out, out loud, loud together. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, anything that you want to make sure that we stair step into? Nine. Okay. We'll just... This needs to come this way just a tad. Why? Because I've been like, like, see, look. People, I think, enjoy only seeing half of you. Well, I think that they like that. There's no, down. there's no penance in that. <laughs> When's the Catholic Man Show book coming out? Mm. Great question, Margo. As soon as you ghostwrite it for us, Margo. <laughs> Trent Horn does write 200 books a year. <laughs> yeah. They're all bestsellers. All right, let's roll. Let's do this. Okay. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. We're on the Lord's team, the winning side, so raise your glass. Raise thine glass. I do want to say really fast, for everybody who is listening right now, if you could just stop for a couple seconds, say a quick prayer to our to two people from the Council of Man, one James and the other is Hiram. Uh, James' his son is going through um, some surgery. Hiram just had a surgery as well, so ask for prayers from all of our listeners to for them and for their families, um, that's something that we do really well on the Catholic Man or on the Council of Man, which is a group of men who go to the CatholicManshow.com, donate ten dollars a month to help things like this. This is the reason why we're able to do things like this, like the video. They support us totally. Um, all money goes right back into the show. We don't we don't pocket any of this money and are able to do things like this, this video, live stream, everything else. Um, and they get a Glen Karen glass, Catholic Man Show Glen Karen glass, and they also get Facebook access, uh, interviews that we do just for them, things like that. But it, it's a great way to network and plug into a bunch of guys. Uh, we fast together, we pray together, um, we talk about important issues on Facebook. So anyway, pray for Harem and pray for James and their families as they go through tough times. Yeah, it's also a place where we can be, uh, I think, more honest about certain things that... Mm. You know, have discussions that we wouldn't necessarily have on a public forum. Mm -hmm. You know, um, well, it, yeah, it, I, I don't know. I mean, that that seems to also take place for sure. Right, and we don't always agree, but that's okay. It it's actually 
nice to have somebody who disagrees, but yeah. yet it's not something that's like, I hate you. You finally said it. You've, that, wanted, that's, you've wanted to that's say how, it that's for how, so long. That's how a lot of people, you know, if you disagree with them, they, I hate you. Yeah, people don't say that. They just uh, pretend to be better than you. They're just like, or they, like, you're just or stupid. they block you. Well, you're, well, you're stupid. Anyway. Uh, unfriend. Let's go ahead and jump into the, the topic. Okay. So we're talking about silence today. And I think before we talk about silence, I think we need to say, well, why would we talk about silence? I think we've actually already had a topic on silence before. Have we? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty positive. What was it? Silence? On silence, yeah. The importance of it. I don't think we did. Okay. It obviously was not very impactful <laughs> if I do not remember it. Okay. If that's the measuring stick, then then we only have like three that have ever been impactful. <laughs> I remember I remember the episodes. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe you're thinking about yourself. Maybe so. Maybe so. I have a good memory for the most part. Okay. So, um, I think everybody knows that just we're surrounded by noise all the time. Uh, m the modern life is essentially one stimuli st to the next. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, how can I be entertained? We can't even poop without getting on our phones. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's true. I don't do it. I don't, I don't poop without checking Facebook. Hmm. Do you? Probably not. No. Nobody does. Yeah. It's ridiculous in this modern world to do that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a heathen. Right. <laughs> yeah. What do you think I'm paying for a data plan for? <laughs> okay. But, I mean, in all seriousness, that's really what it is. Uh, there's a... So I just finished re reading this book, uh, The Power of, Sil Power of Silence by Cardinal Seurat. Um, so there's... That's basically what I'm going to draw most of the topic the discuss yeah so there's a quote in this book modern society can no longer do without the dictatorship of noise it lulls us into an illusion of cheap democracy while snatching our freedom away with the subtle violence of the devil wow and that's really what noise all this extra just a, really what it is is a distraction we're just constantly distracting ourselves Okay, and we're just addicted. You think that's because we're afraid to be bored? Uh, well, um, oh, who was it? Oh, Pascal. He had the famous. Oh yeah, I actually wrote that down. The famous quote. We both wrote down the same thing. Well, this is an obvious quote to talk about with this subject. Okay. All unhappiness of men arises from one single fact: that they cannot stay quiet in their own chamber. All yeah, all of uh, humanity's problems stem from the inability to sit by ourselves for one hour. Yep, that's the abridged version. I'm quoting the uh, original source. Okay, sorry, back. Sorry, to, sorry. Yeah. So uh, between Facebook, television, celebrities, the internet, right? I mentioned to you that to, this to you already. I have no idea why anybody cares about celebrities. Like, why are celebrities even a thing? I mean, aside from the Pope, I get why the Pope is. Everybody wants to know what the Pope is doing. Mm -hmm. He's the Pope. Right. He's the leader of, like, our souls. Okay? Uh, I have... I can come up with no reasons why anybody cares what Kim Kardashian is doing or what George Clooney, what kind of suit did he wear to the latest thing, whatever, or any... any I'm not, you know, saying there's anything bad about celebrities. I mean, the, for them as people. I mean... I, I, I'm not trying to offend them. What I'm trying to say is, who cares about what they're doing, you know? <laughs> so, um, if if we're distracting ourselves, mm -hmm. and it begs the question, what are we distracting ourselves from? Well, that's why I asked. Is it why because are we we're, doing are, are we afraid to be bored? You know, that, uh, that was kind of why I asked that question. Is, is it because we're afraid to be bored? Maybe. Um, I think that screens are just i mean i think there's two there's two answers there's a physiological answer and, and possibly a, and a spiritual answer mm -hmm. um but physiologically you get uh you know an adrenaline not an adrenaline rush you get a dopamine a Hit. dopamine rush um when you look at screens you know when you get immersed uh you know they have done all kinds of studies where they hook people up to like they monitor their brain waves when they're scrolling through their phone mm -hmm. and it just is, it's incredible. In fact, 
there have been insiders, people who used to work for the company on an executive level who have come out and said, yes, we hired psychologists to tell us how to get intentionally get people addicted to Facebook. Hmm. You know, so that that experience is something that you need to replicate. And just like any addiction, the next time you do it, you have to do it more to get the same rush. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um, there are consequences to living a life full of this distraction, this noise. Okay. Um, and th I think there's a good example. People who eat sugar like it's going out of style. Um, when they eat something like a strawberry, it doesn't taste sweet to them. Right. So if you can eat a strawberry and say that doesn't taste sweet, I mean, I get there's some people who just don't like strawberries. Okay, pick something else. Mm -hmm. um, it's because they have become so used to this super high level of sugar that when you eat something that's really very sweet, you're like, oh, it's not very good. Okay, so it's the same thing for us when we're used to such this high level of noise. When we have something else that's really good, like uh, game night with the family, all of a sudden it becomes boring. Because I'm not, I'm used to being stimulated on a much hi higher oh. level. Yeah. My brain is used to running a million miles an hour and I'm only running a thousand right now. And it seems, oh, what a downer, mm. you know? Um, so it's like, uh, it's, we're just all addicted to this stimuli and we're just zombies. I've said this before, you know, about being in line and looking around and I'm the only one not on my cell phone. Right. Uh, and it's like I'm the only one aware of that there's people here in this line. Mm -hmm. There's other people here. There's someone in front of you and behind you. Mm -hmm. Like, what are we doing? We're right. all here to, you know, anyway. Um, here's, here's, a, here's another good quote. Here's kind of, I think, sums this up. Without noise, man is feverish, lost. Noise gives him security, like a drug on which he has become dependent. With its festive appearance, noise is a whirlwind that avoids facing itself. Agitation becomes a tranquilizer, a sedative, a morphine pump, a sort of revere, revere, reverie, reverie? I don't know that word, an incoherent dream world. But this noise is a dangerous deceptive medicine, a diabolic lie that helps man avoid confronting himself in his interior emptiness. The awakening will necessarily be brutal. Wow. Well, you know, um, Vietnam used to, w when they captured prisoners, they used to fill their pris th their prisoner cells with noise, with just loud, loud noises. And it was just to completely irritate them and not be give them a sense of peace whatsoever. They couldn't rest. Yeah. They could not rest. Um, and so they that used to be a form of, um, you know, punishment, I guess, being a prisoner of war is, is Vietnam used to. And I'm sure, I, I'm sure a lot of places used to do this. And probably still do, mm -hmm. but they they don't want to give you that rest. They don't want to give you that peace, and it's because you can only find that peace in silence. Yeah. So the devil has a, uh, um, the devil wants you to be surrounded by noise. It, even in the, if you watch read the book, the Screw Tape Letters, mm -hmm. um, you know he's writing to this apprentice such demon. A, like, such a great book. Totally a great book. He said, you, just keep him distracted with noise. Uh, you know, he, even if it's music, just that he make him think that, Oh, this is beautiful, but it's just keep him distracted with anything that's going on, you know, so that he doesn't think about himself, his interior doesn't think about the creator, just keep him distracted. Um, ultimately the main point of this book is that the language that God speaks is the language of silence. And, and maybe I think a better way to put it is that's not his language, but it's his medium. The medium by which he speaks to you is silence. Mm -hmm. So if you do not have silence, then you cannot hear God. That's the big problem is that all this noise, it's crowding out the still small voice of God. You know, it was the quiet whisper that came to Elijah, not the storm, not the fire. It was the still small voice. And, and Elijah realized that as soon as the, the stillness and that wind hit he hit his face because he knew that's where god was right exactly okay so when we get back we'll wrap this up but then i want to talk about ways to increase silence in our lives okay stop talking we're on the lord's team the winning side so raise your glass stop talking is a good way to start silence well he does he does talk about uh there's dictatorships of noise 
of image and of voice and that one because yeah, i think you could probably be quiet uh without being silent mm -hmm. you can be quiet as far as like audibly without actually being silent yeah you might incessantly find needless chores to do around the house or uh just do busy work mm -hmm. so that you don't you have something to do mm -hmm. you know well in fact what was a uh, jump over to remember what you talked about the difference between sloth and oh uh, what was the one that was similar because it was kind of effeminacy, effeminacy effeminacy and sloth are very similar effeminacy is um not wanting to do the hard for the sake of the uh, of the pleasure for not wanting to give up the pleasure to do the hard something that's arduous sloth is not wanting to do something that's hard period you know yeah yeah so in this case this the arduous thing would be examining yourself you know i mean yeah. that's that's what it ultimately it comes down to everyone deep down you know when we we still have we ever done an episode on uh oh uh rationalization no we but, never we never did one but you know we've all the whole world actually, i don't remember i don't know it. if we did it. we've talked i know we've i've talked about it mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. well not a lot i've talked about it before um we've just rationalized so many things in our life Mm -hmm. And the noise prevents us from having to confront those rationalizations. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's, that's why the world is so noisy. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm almost done with my notes. So from then on, it'll just be like a silence. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I mean, I don't really have, this was your topic, so I didn't really prepare. Well, a then, whole lot. then we're going to talk about like how to increase silence. You know, what, what would be some good activities and. What, okay. have, what have we gotten out of those activities? I okay. think, once again, I think smoking a pipe and fishing. And adoration. Adoration. Man, that's a good one. That's why you're my co-host. Hey, we still have 16 people listening right now or watching on Facebook. That's, that's impressive. It is incredible. I thought for sure, I was going to say over under of seven. And I was probably going to go under. Oh, we lost one. Oh, oh, he's dang. back. All right. Scroll down see, real quick. Okay. Let's roll. Let's do this. Okay. We'll get to the last step segment. We'll see how this goes. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. I'm David Niles, here with Adam Minahan. We're in studio today. If you're listening to me on the podcast, go check us out on YouTube, because hopefully this episode made it. Last episode, turns out the audio didn't get attached to the video. Yeah. And I don't know why. But anyway... Adam just needs to fix it. Yeah, I just have not had time. You just need to, Adam, will you fix we'll it? Just, just, just please, do it. Just, please fix just it. Just do that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, any hue. Um, so we're talking about silence. In fact, maybe the last episode, we should just post the video with no audio. It would be... Uh, It'd be a great way, a, uh, a very beginning to yeah, this episode. Yeah, so I think if you want to increase great in transition. silence, watch more silent films. <laughs> in the dark. In the dark with you <laughs> all right all right learn to speak braille that's a way that is a way that's one way okay so um right on the uh, there at the last end of the last segment we were talking about the language of god and mm -hmm. how he speaks in silence mm -hmm. okay and as i was pondering this because i actually did some pondering for this episode i i realized that it's god respects our free will so much that we have to actively choose him. Mm -hmm. If we, are, it's not like, oh, uh, we, we don't have to actively choose the noise. The noise will come for us. But God will not force himself on us so much. He respects our freedom so much mm -hmm. that we have to seek him out. Okay, He's, he is right there. He's always present with us, you know, waiting for us to turn to him. But unless we quiet turn ourselves away from this noise mm -hmm. of this day-to-day -day life. Um, we won't be able to hear 
his call. Okay, he's calling to us all the time. And the devil, I'm sure, is far too happy, is overjoyed that if he, in as much as he could be overjoyed about anything, that we are so distracted all the time. Mm -hmm. So we have to choose the silence. We have to embrace it. Well, you have to be, yeah, you have to be intentional. Right, exactly. Intentionality. Yes. And I think, I think that is um, a really, really, really big, that is huge. Yeah. Ever since I've heard Father Brian O'Brien talk about being intentional at the 40 Days for Life speech, I have taken that speech. That has been like, you know, there's speeches throughout your life that you hear and you're like, that has influenced me and impacted me mm -hmm. a lot. His, that one right there, I have taken that and applied it in so many different aspects in the Catholic life. Yeah. And in my, in my family life as well, being intentional. You have to be intentional if you want to get things done. Well, I think it goes back to like the zombie thing. The reason you're a zombie is because you're doing nothing intentionally. You're not actively choosing something. You're just reacting. You're just doing, yeah. Like, oh, it's just I'm just going through life. I'm, I haven't you're actually existing. I haven't considered any of the choices that I'm making. I have. I am not weighing their merits. Mm -hmm. I'm not choosing the good. I'm just simply doing. Maybe some of the things I do are good. Maybe they're not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like. Um, it's sort of like the difference between having a natural virtue and a supernatural virtue. You know, mm. on the one hand, I just do things because maybe that's it's a good thing to do. And on the other hand, I do it specifically out of love for God. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's kind of the difference, I think, between... Have you ever thought about the first time you've ever had the most pro a profound moment? Like the first, mm. the, your first realization of... I, a, this is way I, off topic. I'm really sorry. I have, but no, I have no idea what it would be. I've thought about it. Anyway. Do you know your first profound moment? Yes. What is it? I don't want to talk about it right now. Well, I think it could be a whole show. I think we could probably do like making profound moments. Yeah. And, and anyway, I think that could be a whole show that we could talk about. So I don't want to, I don't want to tell my story yet. I used to be a baby. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's get back to silence. Let's get back to silence. <laughs> okay. So, okay. I, I want to say something really fast because we're talking about, please, uh, um, please you being like, why we, why silence is important and how to incorporate silence in our day-to-day -day life. Yeah. And we've talked about, you know, we're maybe afraid to be bored. Um, you can't hear God unless, you, unless you're quiet. And I think also being quiet, it like births creativity. Absolutely. And we've talked before it's about... It's like the shower effect. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and remember, we've had an episode before about beauty. Yeah. And the importance of beauty... In, in our culture mm -hmm. and possibly one of the reasons why we have so much music that's terrible art that's terrible architecture that's terrible maybe even liturgy that's not 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 strong is because we're not quiet we're not facilitating the quiet to to procreate this creativity that gives us the beauty that we need to orient ourselves towards god yeah what do you think about that no step? no i, I think that no, I, I totally think that's it. And I think people don't understand once. And first of all, I, I haven't said this yet. I am not excluding myself or. Oh, I'm from any of this. I know I in the last episode I mentioned, I couldn't even do one right a ride home from work in quiet in silence. Yeah. I, OK, so I, I couldn't do it because I'm also addicted to all of these things. I'm a you know, I live right. in the world just like everybody. I else. struggle with silence sometimes because I can do it. I drive a lot right for work. I've driven two hours before. And I've decided I'm not going to turn the radio on. I'm not going to. I'm not going to listen to anything. I'm just going to drive. And I realize I've had two hours. And I haven't thought about a single thing. Mm -hmm. Didn't think about anything. And it's like, yeah. what a way. Like I could have been learning. I could have been, you know, praying. I could have been doing something. So a lot of times I struggle with silence because when I'm not pray, like if it's not silence or oriented with prayer, I have a silence. And I guess. I mean, I'm a stereotypical guy. I don't know what you, you want to call it, but like, I can literally just sit there and not think about anything. Yes. I have to be intentional about being silent, but yet You're right. yeah. being effective at being silent. Yeah. And I know what you mean, because there'll be some times where I forget my book when I go to adoration. Mm -hmm. And it's like, great. Now, oh, what am I going to do? I'm just going to sit here? <laughs> mm -hmm. Just that's it? And it's like, Yes. That is what you're going to do. It's just like the farmer in France. Mm -hmm. The priest went up to him. I forget the whose was, but it was a farmer, and he was in adoration all the time, just sitting there. Right. And the priest is like, what are you doing? And he's like, in adoration. Look, he's like, I look at him, and he looks, looks at, at me. me. Right. Okay? And one of the things he talks about in this book is that silence, the presence of silence in a relationship is a profound, has profound meaning. If you can sit there quietly with somebody else, 
that imply that is shows that your relationship is deep. Mm-hmm. In fact, there's really probably only a couple people that you could truly be silent with and communicate more without words. You know, it's just the gaze. Mm-hmm. You know, there's in this this silence between them. Mm. Okay, so when you have that, that is a deep, deep relationship. And that's the kind of relationship God wants with all of us. Okay? Yeah, because it's the whole wasting time with God. Right, exactly. Not, not, it's, not that it's wasting time, but you're doing something with somebody, and you don't care what you're doing. You're just being, you're in their presence. Mm-hmm. One of the things the good cardinal says in this book is that silence is a condition for otherness. Silence is a condition for otherness. Condition is, for otherness. Define otherness. Uh, being present with, the, like, preparing yourself for another. Okay, so the noise, uh, finally, once you calm yourself down and you kind of get this silence interiorly, mm-hmm. finally you can listen. You can hear the person next to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I do want to get on to, we've just got a few minutes left. Um how to create a good silence in your life. Um, I think a good place to start is evaluating your leisure time and activities. So what is it that you're already doing for leisure? Because I think that a true leisure should have a one-on-one component. Um, It's either me and God, me and my family, you know, me and my kids, you know, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be, maybe you have more than one person in your family. Uh, but, or it's, but it has this otherness. It's me and the other. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so if your leisure time doesn't have that, it's not like your whole world has to be quiet all the time and like you can never listen to music or you can, uh, I mean, I think podcasts, I, that's one of the things I think is noise for me. I fill my time with podcasts mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's like, oh, if I have a couple minutes of quiet, oh, I, I need to listen to my podcast. You know, and maybe I shouldn't do that. I don't know. Um, and the podcasts I listen to are good. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. they're good. But is that the best thing for me? You know, not all the time, probably. I should probably allow the quiet to fill me every now and then. Um, fishing. Uh, Marcel Brown. Mm-hmm. Dr. Marcel Dr. Brown. Dr. Marcel Brown from several episodes ago, he said, you know, nobody listens to their iPod when they're fishing. And I, the more I thought about that, like, well, maybe if you're fishing in the middle of a lake, you would play music. But if you're fishing on a, in a stream somewhere, mm-hmm. you are fishing. You know, you can't listen to music because you need to hear the sounds. And, like, it is a truly peaceful leisure activity. Mm-hmm. Something I think should maybe make a comeback. Um, I'm in. Yeah. I'm in on that. Like, also, it's sweet. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. smoke your pipe, catch a, a huge fish. I mean, I was trying to catch one with my arm. Yeah. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Talk about quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Down under the water. <laughs> um, and then also, I think smoking a pipe. We've talked about smoking pipes, but there is something so peaceful and leisurely. It gives, uh, yeah, what does it say? They say uh, smoking a pipe gives the guy enough time to think about what he has to say or to shut him up if he's being stupid. Yes. I agree with that. I've never heard it before, but I, I agree with I it. I butchered it, I, but that's, that's the, the gist. So, um, and then the last point I have here in my notes is just about the intentionality like we talked about. Uh, don't just watch a movie because you want to watch something. Watch a movie because you think it will be good for you. If yeah. you, you know, that's if, why I watch very little movies. If you're gonna watch a movie, there's a lot of good movies out there that you can sure. watch. Don't just I do this all the time. Don't just get on Netflix and pick a movie. Like pick a, something that you think will be good, mm-hmm. instead of just like, well, let's watch something. I don't know. Yeah. Shout out to all of our Facebook uh, viewers that watched this episode live. We've been enjoying Smith Creek Moonshine coffee flavored. Talked about our chain and a little bit of silence. We talked a lot about silence. We're on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. Cheers to Jesus. Okay, pause that. Or stop that. Stopped. Now I go over to Facebook. Hey, we got a like. Somebody liked it. We have a lot of likes. Yes, I like likes. 
Uh, Where is Juan? I know like Juan. Me? Juan should be here. Juan, Juan should definitely be here. Um, okay. What do you guys think? Did you guys? Is that something that we should like think about doing more regularly or not? Is this some? The producer is not in the room. No, you would see Juan back here somewhere, or his shadow. True. Somewhere back here. Juan is in Kansas City. That's right. He's visiting his goddaughter. That's true. That's right. Um. Maybe we should start doing this more. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Seems to be well received by y'all. So, it really wasn't that hard. No. To do. No. And it's only gonna get better because we can actually do more things with it too. Yeah. We just haven't messed with the uh, our software. Can we see who's watching? It won't even show us. No. But hey, not too much. Yes, this was great. Sweet. Thanks, Bill. I appreciate it. Yeah, Juan will be probably switching the cams for us moving yeah. forward. I left it I left it on I kind of forgot. I have to do that while we're it's hard to have a conversation cool. and try to like switch the cameras. I So a couple times I left on Adam for a long time. <laughs> yeah. It was hard to tell if it made you guys uncomfortable though. Uh I don't think it I don't know. It doesn't necessarily make me uncomfortable. It makes it's distracting. It's that's what it is. It's distracting. Yeah. It wasn't that we were uncomfortable. It's that now that we've added this video thing, we really need to get Juan, our producer, to kind of do more of this stuff for us because we have to make sure that our cameras are all switching the right way and Facebook's working and and still have a conversation. You know, that's 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 not the easy part. Um, that's that to me that was the toughest part is making sure yeah. that everything was still working correctly and we were still engaged in our conversation. There's still so much we can do with this software. To uh, like at, uh automate the switch to automate everything like if i want to yeah. switch to a camera i can train it so that it switches for 30 seconds and automatically comes back which i just need to do it just takes time right. takes time y'all yeah we're we're still struggling with it but anyway, we'll get there we'll get there I, i'm very uh very happy and very um i'm very thankful you guys uh watched the episode with us yeah you can hear it again in much shorter version on friday morning Thursday or, night, or, Thursday night, Friday morning, or Thursday at seven o'clock on St. Michael Radio. That's true. Or Oklahoma Catholic Broadcasting Network. Yeah. Or a small radio station in Louisiana. Yeah. Are we still on in Louisiana? I think so. As far as I know. As they, far as I know. They didn't tell us otherwise. So. Yeah. All right, y'all. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Cheers to Jesus. In live video.